As I said before, the top and bottom cords are rectilinear members. There's actually one thing that Grasshopper doesn't have built within it is kind of a similar to the pipe, a rectilinear extrusion tool kind of built into Grasshopper. So a quick way I get around that is actually by creating a pipe and then surrounding it with one of those bounding boxes that we used early on to create the roof. So let's go ahead and copy this and we're going to move it up and then we're going to disconnect all of these curves because we don't need those again. So we're going to disconnect this and we're going to grab our top line, put that on. And so that's going to give us this kind of circular profile, what we actually don't want to circle. So going to double click on the screen, type bounding box, and we're going to put our circle into a box. Go ahead and turn the preview off on our original pipe. And now you can see, or if you can see within this kind of preview mode, which we're going to get into the next segment is how we set up a better way of previewing this stuff. It's actually a square extrusion as opposed to the circular extrusion that was there prior. I think you can kind of see here. Let me zoom in here. So there you go. You see the square extrusion. I want that to be a little bit larger, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and put a base radius of one, which is going to give us this kind of larger top cord. We want to do that again for the bottom cord. Instead of copying and pasting this, because at the end of the day, I don't really need the top and bottom cord separated. I'm just going to plug our bottom cords right into the same bit. So again, showed this earlier, but what I'm going to do is click on the white handle and at the same time, press shift, which is going to bring up that little plus symbol in the arrow. And then I'm going to plug that in to the C and that's the way you can put in more than one kind of strand of data into the same component. And so now I have top and bottom cords with a thickness, right? So let's go ahead and unpreview all of this stuff that was prior. Do a little organization here, which we talked about earlier. Kind of moving things around, getting things a little bit more organized. So if we step back through that, at the beginning of the day, we started with using this plugin, which is a function of Launchbox, which is under this kind of structure. And you can see you know, there's a number of different kind of structural systems kind of defined within here. We use this 2D truss, looking and kind of analyzing what that is looking for, then saying, okay, well, I know I'm going to have a line plugged into there. For the bottom, I'm going to want to set the depth, you know, so my curved truss, I'm just going to move that one line. And then, and so how do I define that line? I know the truss wants to span from column to column, and so I'm just going to use those column points. I'm going to separate out the ones I don't need. I'm going to go ahead and move those points up to the top of my columns, and then I'm going to draw those lines between, and then that's going to then define the boundaries of my truss. So all of this is still you know, very parametric. So if I go all the way back to the beginning here, and I say, well, I don't want to look at three column lines. I want to look at, you know, six column lines. So now all of a sudden I can go ahead and expand that system to whatever kind of depth that I want it to be, right? So this is all still set up to be as parametric as we would like it. So again, you know, I think in this particular case, we're building Eames House, which is kind of a known quantity per se, in a sense that it is designed. But I think this is where Grasshopper is amazing in a sense, because it allows you to iterate through design options so quickly. And you might spend more time up front setting up the Grasshopper definition than you would if you traditionally modeled it in Rhino. But the strength of it is, you know, now if I want to go through and change any particular part, I can really quickly without having to go back and model it. And so that's where the time saving potential of Grasshopper really is, is in that sense that if you have a practice, and I don't know too many designers that don't have a practice like this, where you, you're constantly iterating through multiple versions of any one particular thing and kind of studying, analyzing, doing that way of kind of evaluating whatever you're designing, you know, that's where Grasshopper is incredibly powerful that you can always, you know, no matter how much you kind of piece together and how complex of a geometric system that you're getting into, you can always go back and change those base factors. I mean, you know, we could change the column size at this point. We could change whatever we needed to, you know, the rotation, whatever it needs to be, all based, you know, on this kind of definition, which allows you a lot of flexibility in your whole design process. I'm going to, again, just do a little bit of cleanup here. And so we have these two parts go into our truss, and then the rest of this goes into making our truss. I'm going to go ahead and turn these to the dark gray, even though they're technically not really, well, they are previewing some things, but just so all we have on is what we want to see. And that kind of gets me into the next plugin. Let's group this real fast, actually, before we jump there. So I'm going to go control G to group it. And I'm going to right click on it and say, trust creation. 
Beautiful. And let's give this a custom color, a color that you guys won't be able to see until it appears. How about a red? Perfect.